hi all feminism in this video i would like to discuss the topic feminism and uh, i think you may be familiar with the term feminism it's a very influential social political literary movement that has its influence in various fields of life in actual we can say that feminism as a movement is arguing for the equality of the sexes or in uh, it is concerned with the problem of women's inequality in society and also in some cases some of the solutions for such inequality so if you trace the origin of feminist movements we will be see we will be able to see that it is rather literary in the beginning than uh, political at first thinkers wrote books and argued for uh, their causes and that influenced uh, and later became a social movement so we will see some of the prominent figures uh, in the early uh, feminist thought those who come out with uh, some such issues or oh, first and foremost is the figure mary wollstonecraft whose work a vindication of the rights of women published in 1792 mary wollstonecraft became a very foremost feminist thinker then olive schreiner's women and labor olive schreiner is best remembered for the story uh, work the story of an african farm and her work women and labor uh, raised the issues of uh, issues faced by wo by women then a very prominent figure in the modern world is virginia wool a famous novelist and she also wrote a work called a room of ones on dealing with the issues of inequality then you may have studied simone de beauvoir the second sex that dealt with the subsidiary uh, the secondary position uh, of women in society then there are some male members who also talked about the same kind of issues uh, first and foremost john stuart mill whose book the subjection of women uh, published in 1869 uh is one of the earliest works on women inequality then engels frederick engels uh was the origin of family published in 1884 also talked about the same kind of issues a very important concern in the feminist thought is the concern with conditioning and uh, socialization so toril moy uh a prominent feminist thinker uh, in in her essay in the feminist reader uh, deals with uh, three distinctions of the terms we usually use the term feminist often in a negative uh, side uh, negative way so we use feminist female and feminine so what are the uh, basic differences between these two terms so for toril moy uh, when we say feminist it's a political position political position in the sense that a person who is political you know in the sense that a person who who understood the problem of inequality in society and uh, thinking about equality of sexes uh, the sex so feminist is a political position whereas female when we say male and female we normally uh, we should focus on the biological difference it's a matter of biology female and male but where has feminine or uh, when we say masculine as well feminine and masculine uh, that means a set of culturally defined characteristics in the sense that the society has certain views what constitute a femininity or masculinity a person a male should be like this a female should be like this so there are certain defined characteristics uh, by the society and feminine those qualities we often call as feminine uh, are not neutral qualities they are all culturally constructs cu cultural constructs so this is the way toremoy uh, defined these 
three terms in her works. So what is the connection between literature and feminism? As I said, uh, the argument for an equality of sex originated in literature and feminist movements, especially the feminist movements in the 1960s and 70s have to be considered as a result of the uh, uh, argument for equality in literature. Uh, above all, uh, feminism has been literary uh, from the very beginning because it really is the significance of the images of women promulgated by literature. We know that how women are, be, women are being represented uh, in works of literature. So the uh, feminist literary critics, feminist movements in general, they in the very beginning itself realize the significance of the images of women promulgated by literature. Secondly, the representation of women in literature is one of the most important forms of socialization. Since it provided the role models which indicated to women and men what constituted acceptable versions of the feminine and legitimate feminine goals and aspirations. So, through literature, the society gives us certain role models. For example, Sita in the, in the Ramayana or uh, Satyavan Savitri in the Puranas or even uh, you will see the very prominent, very famous evergreen Malayalam song so all these give certain models to the society on how a woman or a man or a man should behave in society so the representation of women in literature uh, has has been seen as a very crucial issue within feminist literary criticism then another prominent uh, critique in feminist criticism is Alain Schauwalter. She has come out with uh, uh, three phases of feminist criticism. Especially it was uh, in the 1980s, uh, there was a kind of an, uh, uh, kind of an approach from feminist critics to give a theoretical aura to feminist criticism. So they have certain certain characteristics they have come out with the certain characteristics of feminist criticism and they say that feminist criticism or according to uh, feminist critics it became much more eclectic meaning that it began to draw upon the findings and approaches of other kinds of criticism such as marxism structuralism linguistics and so on so it influenced it was influenced by other literary critic criticism literary movements like marxism and structuralism and linguistics and uh, post-structuralism. Secondly, it is it is focused from attacking male versions of the world to exploring the nature of the female world and outlook and reconstructing the lost or suppressed records of female experience. So, the in the first part, uh, feminist writers, they were attacking the representation of women by male writers, but later, uh, they started exploring themselves. And thirdly, Attention was switched to the need to construct a new canon of women's writing by rewriting the uh, history of the novel and poetry in such a way that neglected women writers were given new prominence. So there was a, a, an attempt to reimagine or redefine the canon. So it was one such attempt was by Elaine Showalter in her work towards the feminist poetics. She talked about uh, antro text and gyno text. Uh, the term androtext means uh, books by men, whereas gynotext means uh, books by women. So she coined the term gynocritics, meaning the study of gynotext. But gynocriticism is a broad and varied field, and any generalization about it should be treated with a question. So gynocriticism refers to kind of criticism with a woman as writer or producer of textual meaning as against a woman as reader she says so uh, the subjects of gynocriticism are as she says the history styles themes runners and structures of writing by women the psychodynamics of female creativity the trajectory of the individual or collective female career and the evolution of evolution or loss of a female literary tradition so these are some of the aspects of gynocriticism according to uh, Elaine Shawwater, 
and she talks about with uh, some you know there are some famous writers who can be uh, considered kind of critics for example patricia mayer sparks uh, ellen moose and uh, ellen shawata himself and sandra gilbert and susan gruber the, uh, these uh, critics can be considered as gyno critics so ellen shawata again uh, divided the entire history of feminism into three phases the first phase beginning from 1840 to 1880 is called as the feminine phase in which uh, women writers the early women writers uh, bronte sisters or even before uh, that uh, they are, these women writers they imitate men the style of writing of, uh, by men uh, the strategy used by the male writers all these were being imitated by the feminine uh, fe uh, female writers or the uh, women writers during the early period and the second phase is the feminist phase uh, she says 1880 to 1920 onwards in which uh, women advocated a uh, minority rights and protested means uh, instead of merely imitating men they advocated some kind of uh, rights and uh, protested through their writings and the third phase is the female phase beginning from 1920 in which the focus is on women's text as opposed to merely uncovering misogyny in men's text so the entire uh, concept has been changed to uncovering their own uh, internal creativity and uh, so uh, such kinds of things because uh, this phasing itself into three phases and all that this itself He is an attempt to give a theoretical kind of an uh, aura to the uh, feminist criticism. So, uh, with this, I will be giving you some uh, basic introduction to feminist criticism, and in the upcoming videos, I will be moving on to some other issues in within feminist criticism. Thank you.